Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you're new here, my name is Neve, and it would mean the world to me if you would stick around. Yesterday I went to the theatre for the first time in pretty much exactly two years, which is so exciting. You should have seen the state I was in with just like pure excitement. Uh, I went with my friend Ash and I think they must have thought there was something deeply wrong with me because I was like vibrating in my seat with just like so excitement whilst we were sitting waiting for the play to start uh, and I went to see a production of The Tempest uh, and I found it really interesting and I just thought that I had to do a YouTube video talking about it with you guys because it was such like a landmark moment for me like my first trip back to the theatre in so long and I think since the last time I went to see something actually live in a theatre my relationship with theatre, uh, my dedication to it, my appreciation for it has definitely changed and evolved a lot. Um, so it just felt like important to sort of like document this moment, uh, particularly because that's what this channel like was made for, was to talk about theatre and books and yeah, I just, I really wanted to share this experience that I've had with you guys. So the production of The Tempest that I went to see was at the Tron Theatre in Glasgow and if you're unfamiliar with the Tron Theatre, they sort of have a bit of a reputation for doing sort of odd plays or taking kind of classic well-known plays and putting new or alternative twists on them. You should have a look at some of the things they've done in the past. It's been quite interesting. I've seen a couple of productions at the Tron before um, and I enjoyed all of them. So knowing that it was going to be at the Tron and knowing it was directed by the director the man that it was directed by, which I'll talk to you more about in a minute, had me already pretty excited before I even got there. I had high hopes. Um, what also gave me high hopes for the show and what is like an important discussion point is that this was an all-female cast, which if you're familiar with The Tempest is not usually the case because almost every character in The Tempest is a man, with the exception of Miranda, Prospero's daughter. So that really intrigues me, like the idea of seeing an all-female production of any Shakespeare was really interesting to me. Um, I wasn't massively familiar with The Tempest before I went in. I knew vaguely what it was about and knew obviously that having an all-woman cast was not the status quo for this play. But because I didn't know a lot about it, I decided to just leave the knowledge that I had at what it was and go in as blind as I could to see like what impact it had on me without being clouded by preconceptions of what it should look like. Ultimately this show is really about male greed and um, sort of like the damage that men's intense need to be in power does to each other themselves and every other person anywhere in their radius so it was really interesting to see this slightly different vibe of the show because it wasn't men that you were watching play these really crap people who get away with a lot of the stuff they do purely and simply because they are men uh so that was really interesting what I will say from the get-go is that I really, really enjoyed this production. I thought it was so interesting for so many different reasons and I had a good time. I wasn't, I was like absorbed. I wasn't thinking about when it was going to be over or thinking about how long I had been there. Like I just watched and what also luckily was the case was that I understood it really well, which is definitely like a compliment to the actors, but I was a little bit worried that um, because I don't, I haven't read a lot of Shakespeare and I've never seen Shakespeare live before that I would maybe have a little bit of difficulty with the language and just like being immersed in the play whilst also making sure that I understood the language because I'd never had to do it before but uh, luckily I understood it really well even if I didn't know exactly what like each word meant. Um, I had a pretty good grasp at all times of what was going on and what people were saying and what that meant and the implications that it had which I think obviously is very important uh, so yeah I'm glad for that. I'm now going to go into like a little bit more detail about different elements of the play. So the first person that I'm going to talk to you about is the director Andy Arnold. Now he is the like 
creative director or artistic director i can't remember what the actual term is of the tron theater so he directs most of the the things that they do if not all of them so i've seen a couple of things that he's done before some of the most memorable or like the productions of his that tend to get mentioned a lot are he done enda walsh's ballet turk which i've seen uh, and loved. He rewrote or like he directed a rewritten version of The Alchemist, the old farce, uh, in 2019. It was the last thing I seen actually in the theatre before uh, yesterday, which was also really good. And he did a production of Martin McDonagh's The Lonesome West in 2016 at the Tron, which obviously I did not see, but I'm very angry and jealous that I didn't see because I'm a massive Martin McDonagh fan and it's rare to see his stuff in Scotland so gutted that um, I wasn't quite old enough to be aware of or be able to see it but there's that. He also did, he like was the the premiere production of a play, I can't remember what it's called, it'd be like Ulysses? Ulysses? I'm not 100% sure but that was like a big deal. He's a pretty well known guy and he does some really interesting stuff. So what I'm going to read to you before I tell you about the production is in the program he wrote a director's note which I think explains a lot of the aspects of the play that I will talk about later um, and the intentions behind those things being the way they were. So I'm going to read that to you and it says First, I have to say that it's a joy to be making live theatre again, playing to audiences who are physically, not virtually, in the Tron Theatre. We've been working with a cast of 11 Scottish-based female and female-identifying actors, none of whom have been cast in a Tron production before. I wanted us to stage this particular production during the COP26 summit in a way that embraces more, a more environmental, environmentally friendly approach to producing work, i.e. minimalist staging with set, prop and costumes recycled from stock and capitalising on the extraordinary atmosphere of the Tron's stripped back main auditorium. And basically he was talking about how this was meant to happen earlier on this year, but didn't because of COVID, but like that's not the um, most important. But then he goes on to talk about how he used this as an opportunity to meet with actors who maybe would have never got a chance to work at the Tron, who have never, haven't had massive amounts of luck in the Scottish drama and theatre industry. Uh, and that got to introduce a lot of new actors that we've never seen on the Tron stage before. When I would say, like personally, I feel like they use, before this one, there was a lot of the same actors in the shows like again and again. So that was really interesting. Um, and it's always nice to know that there are people in the industry who are trying to make it easier for actors to get work because I don't think that that is always the case uh, here or elsewhere. Uh, and then a little bit about The Tempest, I, I will read to you. Um, at once dreamlike, surreal, magical, romantic and cruel, The Tempest is essentially a play about the exploitation of male power and greed and the colonisation of other lands and their indigenous inhabitants. Introducing an exclusively female voice to the stage subverts this interpretation, bringing a new energy and nuance to the language. It's a play I've been fortunate enough to stage twice before, once with students from RTS and another time with Chinese actors in Beijing. This production is different from the other two. The beauty of this surreal and metaphorical play, Shakespeare's Last, is that any interpretation is possible and it's been a joy to explore it with this particular group of theatre artists. So yeah, like I said before, The Tempest is very heavily about male greed and its after effects. And I certainly agree with the director that it was fascinating to see this without any actual men there like doing it. And it gave it like a less violent, like impact because the sort of like main character Prospero he is a cruel man and he is taking advantage of this spirit in on the island to do his dirty work for him so that he can live this happy dreamlike safe life on an island whilst Ariel suffers for it uh, and also being able to control everything else that happens on the island and then all the new people who come uh, and basically make himself untouchable through this spirit's energy and that I mean it's shit but 
I think if you were seeing it with a man in it, you would really understand that sort of like male desire to be in power and the greed and the sort of, I, I don't know how to word this in a way that sounds nuanced enough but sort of like the inherent violence of men because they can and I'm not saying that every man is violent but but men can get away with having na a natural state that includes violence in a way that women can't uh which I think is very obvious in almost all of Shakespeare's work but this one particularly because it is entirely men and what their actions do to each other um, but almost having a woman do it, and Prospero in this was played by Nicole Cooper, and she was wonderful. Absolutely one of my favourite actors that was in this. I couldn't look away from her when she was speaking. I was so interested in her existence on the stage and what she brought to this character. But as a woman playing the role, it almost humanised him slightly because... It put a lens of almost desperation into his behaviour that was fueled by fear and like a protective instinct over his daughter in comparison to the the greed the unadulterated greed that maybe um is the usual interpretation hello it's ed i mean I would like to add that um, another reason why I think that this is an, it was interesting to have a woman do this is that I think because of the way society views women as sort of like protective, motherly, softer creatures, even if that's not the correct way we should be viewing them, it almost like nothing about her performance was inherently less violent or less cruel. But it put this weird tinge on it that definitely comes from a societal misunderstanding of women. But what was also more interesting was in the moments where she was really unavoidably cruel, I think it was almost more impactful because you're less likely to expect that kind of cruelty and that kind of violence from what you see as a woman. So I thought that was quite interesting as well. Where that image is ruined and rightfully so is when he interacts with Caliban who is the sort of like native inhabitant of this island that the play is based on who Prospero has enslaved and uses his magic or the spirit's magic to keep in check uh, and he did so by taking originally taking advantage with Caliban's welcoming behaviour when he when he arrived or shipwrecked onto the island and that's when a lot of the humanity of Prospero disappears whatever is there of it is gone when he interacts especially in the beginning with Caliban uh, and the actor playing Caliban Liz Kettle she was phenomenal and the way that she managed to put herself at the mercy of all these like young women was just fascinating it was so interesting some of the like a lot of the performances in the show were just like so strong my only criticism of any of the performances and I don't even have like specific um actors to to say this about and if I did I don't think I would anyway is that sometimes I do think I was quite aware that they were acting if that makes sense like with Prospero I feel like that was what I felt like I was watching like I felt like I was watching this character as a person whereas I think there were some of the other characters at moments where I was very aware that I was watching a performance which I think depending on on what you're watching works or doesn't work but there were moments for me where it sort of did break my immersion slightly but yeah, overall, I think it was a fantastic production. One thing that I found particularly interesting about this production was the, like, movement, the use of movement. There was a lot of almost physical theatre-type movement interspersed within the show. 
um, where that really demonstrated the use of magic in the show. Um, and like the way Ariel, the spirit, moves is in such sharp contrast to all, how almost every other character in the show moves until they are under his um, magic. And then they also start to move very strangely and unnaturally and it makes it so obvious what's going on and I thought that was so clever and so interesting and also the the actual movement that they do itself I thought was so clever because in a lot of things that you watch with magic in them it is almost portrayed as like a much as, as an almost like merry thing whereas in the tempest the magic is a lot darker and less pleasant and it's not necessarily something that you're excited about the existence of and the way that the actors moved under the influence of the magic looked painful and uncomfortable and unnatural and the shapes that they created with their bodies were often quite like grotesque um and it was just i feel so clever a way of communicating that it's not nice magic and this sorcery is not doing anyone any good other than Prospero who even when using the magic looks pretty much un untouched by it and unfazed by it. It doesn't look like it's taking an awful lot out of him or like it's just he's just causing all this damage and energy. Um I thought it was so interesting. Another thing that I really enjoyed about this production that um, the director mentioned briefly in his note was the staging and the set. So uh, the Tron is not a massive auditorium. It is quite small. It's quite intimate. Uh, and the stage is like on the floor. And usually like the some of the things I've seen like um, the Alchemist, the Institute of the Seven Alchemists, the site of the al alchemist was like the inside of a house but it was on a raised platform of some sort the stage was like above the ground whereas this they were on the floor and the only real set pieces were a, a set of stairs like an old ladder type thing and like bookshelves and all these old books that have probably been used in hundreds upon hundreds of productions of the Tron because books are a very common set piece uh, and they're so interesting because you didn't really have anything else to look at other than the actors uh, and the books held a lot of significance to the plot and Prospero's character and the books are very important to him so them being there is a plot point and it's an important plot point but they're not visually distracting you don't spend a lot of time looking at them your main focus at all points in the show is pretty much on the actors and how they're moving and the space that they're taking up um which was so important and i think really nailed the product this production as a whole i think not giving us anything else to look at made us unable to ignore the darker element of this show because we got we, ha we had to watch the bad things happen and that sounds really stupid because like when you're at the theatre you have to watch the bad things happen but um I don't know I just think there was something particularly good about that. The other thing that I thought was really interesting which makes a slight contrast to the point I've just made about movement and magic is that at a lot of points when the magic was being used there was like this pink purple soft lighting that came up onto the stage uh, and this really beautiful music played and it was really enchanting and sort of more midsummer night's dream fairy type magic that like that sort of connotation but the impact of the magic that you're watching is still really unsettling and I think that was so interesting because even when the magic seems nice and the actors or the characters on stage are excited about it, ultimately you're unable to ignore that it's doing harm. And the end of The Tempest, I feel I justify, justified in spoiling this because it's a Shakespeare play. It's, spoilers are kind of, I feel, a moot point. Um, Prospero leaves the island with all of these people that... Um, he has made himself into this great person by forgiving or saving or whatever um and he leaves the spirit 
and Caliban on the island. Caliban has been basically wrecked beyond belief by this entire experience and he has refused to set Ariel the spirit free from his ownership because if he does that he will not be able to maintain the illusion he's created long enough to get on a boat and get home. So the people that suffer the most are the people the, the native inhabitants of this island that he has come and he has manipulated and drained for everything that they can offer him and then left. Uh, which I think is important because that is the case in the modern world and in the past, in real life. People, predominantly white people, have went to other places uh, and they have ruined the land and the culture and had no respect for the people there and then when it no longer served the purpose for them they've left and not tidied up the mess or the destruction or the damage or the hurt behind them and I felt the ending of this was done really well because when he left there's like there's all this noise and commotion and everyone's like yeah Prospero uh, and then the door shuts and the only two people left on stage are Ariel and Caliban and for about 15 seconds there's just dead silence uh, and they're not looking at each other but they're not looking at us they're just standing there and there's no light like there, there's lighting because you can see them but it's like plain pale white light the stage is there's not a lot of set so it's quite dark it's quite barren and that's it and they just stand there for like 20 seconds and you just have to look at them and really acknowledge the damage that's been done to this island, their home, and them, and their lives, and their well-being. Uh, and I think that was a good way to end it. Overall, I think this was like a really, really good production, and I'm so glad I got to see it, and I'm so content with it being my first trip back to the theatre in a very long time. I would probably give it like a four out of five stars, uh, maybe three and a half, because I have auditory processing issues so I don't want to blame this on the actors in case it absolutely was just me because it's very likely that it was just me but there were moments where I couldn't really make out what the actors were saying not because of the like old English language just because the words were like running together in my head and I don't know if that was from like diction issues or me and my processing issues so I don't want to make like a big point out of it but it did take me out of the um atmosphere sometimes so from a personal enjoyment purpose it took away from it slightly for me but as a whole on a production probably about a four out of five I thought it was great uh and I definitely recommend if you are in Scotland uh specifically Glasgow to keep an eye on the things that the Tron are doing because I've never seen something at the Tron and not enjoyed it and I think that Andy Arnold definitely has some very interesting things to say in the production that he does. Personal favourite of mine of, of shows he's directed was definitely Ballyturk. I thought Ballyturk was brilliant. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out on the Tron and what they're doing in the future. And if you are interested, I highly would recommend that you go and see something there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, leave a comment. If you haven't already, it would mean the world to me if you would subscribe. And I'll see you next week. Bye.